Welcome everybody. Are you new to lens ball photography? Well, today I'm going to teach you a simple trick that you can use in your lens ball photography that will eliminate one of the main problems that you're going to find when you take photographs with the lens ball. So, one problem that a lot of photographers will quickly encounter is the inverted image inside the ball. So that's right, the process of refraction is going to turn the image inside your ball so that it is upside down in relation to the background image. How can you fix this problem? Well, you can use some post-processing to eliminate this uh, problem and I'm going to take you through that process today. We're going to start from taking the photograph, putting it onto the computer, processing the image, and then you're going to see the final result through the process of today's video. I'm Simon Bond, and you're listening to Creative Photography School. So let's begin by looking at the equipment that you should be using for taking this type of photo. Okay, so let's talk equipment. So one of the first questions that a lot of people who are new to lens ball photography will ask is which is the best lens to use with their camera? Well, most people are going to say the macro lens and that's true, this is a great lens for lens ball photography. Why is this lens a good lens? Well, you can get nice and close to the uh, glass ball, so it's going to fill the photograph with the glass ball. And you will also find that the background is much easier to control because typically speaking with a macro lens, your background is some distance from the main subject and so it will therefore blur out. However, today we're not going to use a macro lens for this photograph. Uh, we're going to use a different kind of lens. We're going to be using a wide angle lens. So why would I use such a different lens for this type of photograph? Well, uh, I want to show a lot more of the background with this. So I already told you I'm going to flip the image inside the ball so that it's the same orientation as the background. With a macro lens, I'm not going to really see too much of the background. So it's not the appropriate lens for this type of photograph. However, a good wide angle lens is, I want to show a nice wide cityscape scene and I want to capture the image inside the ball that that cityscape sh scene will be refracting. Okay, so that's the lenses. I'm using a DSLR camera. You could use an iPhone. Uh, typically speaking, I'd recommend you use the iPhone during the day for this type of photo. I'm going to be photographing in the evening, so a DSLR camera with a tripod is more appropriate. Finally, the glass ball that you use. So, uh, this is one of the larger lens balls. This is the 80mm variety. You could use uh, a different size of glass ball depending on the photograph you want to take. There are two sizes of lens ball, but beyond that there's quite a lot of glass balls or crystal balls, they are sometimes called, of varying sizes. They go from marble size up to 120 millimeters or so. So those balls are much larger, the 120 millimeter balls, and they can be good for photographs too, although heavy to carry around. You might also experiment with different color uh, glass balls, but that's for another video. You can come and check that out later. So now we've talked about the equipment, it's time to look at the location that we're going to be taking this photograph in. One of the 
One of the most important things when it comes to getting the right photograph with lens balls is scouting a good location to take those photographs. So today I've chosen a location which has got a great background. You've got all of those tall buildings and in a minute when blue hour comes they're going to be nicely lit up and I'm going to get a nice bokeh background with a nice crisp image inside the ball. But the real thing that I like about this location is the fact that I've got this here. This is a nice flat surface, there are lots of divots in the surface and it's ideal for placing the lens ball on the surface without the ball rolling off anywhere. What's also nice for this technique, which you want to flip the image inside the ball, is that you get a full image of the ball. So nothing is blocking the ball at the bottom of the image, nothing is going to be blocking the ball at the top of the image. So for instance, if you hold the ball with your hands, your fingers could get in the way of a bottom part of the image, which is going to make it more difficult later when we come to the post-processing to correctly flip the image in a believable and realistic way. So we've got a nice background, we've got a surface to put the ball on, the ball is going to be elevated above the ground a little bit so that the background is fully shown within the ball. This is an ideal location for taking a great lens ball photo. Okay, excellent. We're all ready, uh, ready to take the photograph. I just want to talk a little bit about the time of the day which it's nice to take lens ball photographs. I've chosen the uh, blue hour uh, for today's photograph uh, because you've got a nice uh, bright black ground now with that nice deep blue sky but you've also got the buildings from the cityscape beginning to turn their lights on and that's an ideal kind of photograph to take with the lens ball. It's not the only time you could come to this location to take the photograph though. Uh, the other time of the day would be in the morning with the sun behind the camera lighting up those buildings and that would also be a great time of the day to take the photograph. So sometime maybe one or two hours after sunrise in this location with the nice golden light from the sun shining on those buildings. Okay, so we're now ready to take the photograph. So let's go ahead and get the lens ball out and put it in position so that we can get the photo. And welcome back everybody. So now we've got the photograph, it's been taken and I've already uploaded it to the computer. So it's time to look at Photoshop and how you go about flipping the image so that you can see the image inside the ball and the background image in the same orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop now. Now you can see the image which uh, was taken earlier and here's the ball and here's that cityscape background slightly blurred into bokeh. For this technique I already spoke about the need to have the bottom portion of the ball so that you can see the whole bottom portion. Let's look at an image which isn't quite so appropriate and talk about why that won't work. Okay, here we have an image of another cityscape and in this case the ball is sat on a link chain. 
it's a very nice place for the ball to sit. However, if you actually want to flip the ball, it's a problem because we haven't got this data for this portion of the ball where the link chain is obscuring the top portion of the ball and the left portion of the ball. So when it comes to rotating, you haven't got any information here about these buildings that you can position over here and instead you'll get this ugly chain on this side of the ball and the effect won't work nearly as well. So situations like this where there's something covering the ball, be it this link chain or your hand, uh, that's something to avoid if you want to flip the image. Right, so let's move back on to the image which we want to use for this particular technique. The first step that you need to take is selecting the ball. We're going to use the elliptical tool for that. Okay, so do you think you can select the ball and not the background? Well, let's have a go. And you'll find that it's kind of difficult to get a clear selection. You're either probably going to have a little bit at the top or a little bit at the bottom, which isn't snugly selected. And that's going to be a problem when you come to flip the image. But there is a solution. So let's deselect. Instead, you're going to use the rulers to make sure you make an accurate selection of the ball. So we're going to drag down the bottom ruler to the bottom of the ball. And we're going to make another ruler at the top. And we're going to need to make a left hand selection and a right hand selection. OK, so these rulers are right on the edge of the ball in each case, and we now have a nice square selected around the ball. So again, we're going to use this elliptical tool, and we're going to position the mouse cursor right on the corner of the top left square. And we're going to drag it down to the bottom right. So you can see I've got the selection right on the corner now. And my ball is now properly selected and we're ready to move on. Let's go to view. I'm going to clear those guides. Okay, so we don't need those guides anymore. Now you need to create a new layer. I've already got layer one here and we're going to, in a minute, we're going to copy and paste this ball onto the new layer. Right, so before we do that though, we want to make sure that the um, feathering around the outside of the ball is somewhat soft so that there's some forgiveness in terms of um, the uh, the way this image is flipped. So we're going to go to select, modify and feather. We're going to have a radius of three so let's go ahead and select that. Right now we're ready to proceed so let's go to of edit copy. Sorry, I need to be in the correct um, image. So edit, copy. Now we go to layer one and we're going to paste that ball into the layer. Right now we're going to go to edit transform and we're going to rotate. You can either do that freeform or you can uh, click rotate 180 degrees which is what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click 180. Okay now you can see that the image in the ball has been flipped so that it orientates the same as the background. 
for the uh, final part of this process, I'm going to um, slightly pull out the ball so that if there are any edges which are slightly um, not covered by the bottom of the ball, that's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to go back to Edit, Free Transform, and I'm just going to pull out the ball ever so slightly on each side and there we're done so okay so now we have our ball and it's being flipped and you can see the background and that's how you go about flipping the ball in post-processing okay I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about this particular technique and now I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about another course which I have for you about lens ball photography. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found it useful and you've learned about how to do a post-processing technique with the lens ball. Now, lens ball photography has really taken off in the last couple of years, but I've been taking photographs with the lens ball for many, many years. My work's been featured in national newspapers and magazines and I want to pass on the knowledge which I've gained over the last nine or ten years taking photographs with my favourite piece of equipment, the lens ball or some people call this a crystal ball. So my course is called Globalize uh, and you're going to learn all the tricks and secrets of lens ball photography when you buy that course. You'll learn about how you can make the ball float in midair. You'll learn about how you can take portrait photographs with the lens ball, because this is a very diverse piece of photographic equipment. It's not just about landscapes or detail photographs, portraits which you use the ball for a bit more distortion and a bit more creativity with the work you do. Okay, so I'm Simon Bond and you've been listening to Creative Photography School. If you're interested in buying the course, that's exciting and you can use a discount code which I've included down at the bottom in the description about this video. I hope to see you in a few minutes time once you've bought that course and you can continue learning about lens ball photography with me. Once again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.